Welcome to episode 1 of the series Ancient Egyptian Object Stories. In this video, we will be looking at pre-dynastic pottery. First, we need to get acquainted with Ancient Egyptian chronology as this is one of the most important tools for understanding Ancient Egypt. Here it is arranged in different groups of time periods. The pre-dynastic period, the Old and Middle Kingdoms, the New Kingdom, and the Greek-Roman Late Antique periods, culminating at around the 400s AD. Egyptologists break these time periods down into much smaller time periods, like dynasties, but we will learn more about those when we look at objects from those times. This episode explores the pre-dynastic period. This is when the ancient Egyptian civilization really took root and began to develop into an extraordinarily rich culture. Furthermore, pottery is probably the most important and most valuable type of object to come out of the ground. It is the most foundational feature of any given civilization, and it can tell us a lot of things such as date, methods of manufacture, types of clay used to make the pottery, types of vessels the ancient Egyptians used, purpose of vessels such as eating, storage, etc., and the contents of a vessel based on residual material like ointments. In archaeology, the further down into the ground you dig, the farther back in time you are going. Layers of pottery can tell us during which time periods the ancient Egyptians were active in a given area, and archaeologists can trace patterns of human activity and reconstruct a complete history of a site. So naturally, pottery is the best place to start in this series. Pottery chronology was introduced by archaeologist William Flinders Petrie, who was one of the most influential pioneers in the field of Egyptology. In 1899, he published his pottery chronology that he based on his study of Nagata culture. His groundbreaking analysis paved the way for future Egyptologists, and ceramic studies are now an integral feature of modern archaeological work. Nagata is the name of a town in southern Egypt where there was an important Egyptian cemetery. Petrie excavated this cemetery in the late 19th century. The smaller time periods of the pre-dynastic period, Nagata 1, 2, and 3, are named after this site. This type of pottery was not found just at Nagata, but also at another important site called Hierakonpolis. The ancient Egyptians called this town Neken. It was the cult site of the falcon-hooded god Horus, the site of what may be the first ancient Egyptian temple, and, like Nagata, a significant cemetery. Pottery chronology has, like most fields of study, seen development in methods and practices, allowing for more fine-tuned analyses of ceramics. You will find in most field reports and other publications several images of ceramic profiles, these profiles are useful in presenting the type of potteries found at a site, their shape, and their fabric. All this information tells us the date of occupation in the site where the pottery is found. Keep in mind, though, that most pottery survives only as broken sherds and not often as fully intact vessels, but even these broken fragments can reveal all the information that an intact vessel can. The pottery presented in this episode dates to between 3700 and 3100 BC, which is over 5000 years ago. The earliest pottery type is black-topped redware, because of its polished black top. It's a simple yet elegant type of vessel, and in later dates, some symbolic modeling was incorporated into its manufacture. The specific time period Egyptologists assigned to this vessel is called Nagata I, or Emration, and it also appears in the Nagata II, or Gerzian period. Also from the Nagata II period comes the white, cross-lined pottery. This is a redware decorated with white lines, and it is with this pottery that ancient Egyptian iconography depicting themes of chaos and order began to appear. Images of hippos and crocodiles were popular and represented chaotic forces. These were two of the most dangerous animals and are often depicted in art as being defeated or harpooned by people on boats or skiffs. Another form of Nagata ware appeared during the Nagata 2 to 3 periods. This is called decorated ware. It is characterized by the white background and red painted scenes. 
The most common decorations are boats manned by what appear to be a dancing female with her arms cast over her head and several other male figures. Around them are images of water, vegetation, and even flamingos. These figures were also modeled three-dimensionally. This famous example is of the dancing woman, depicted in an abbreviated form with a conical body, painted white to mimic a dress, and a beak-like head. She has been sometimes called the bird woman because of the shape of her head. The exact meaning of this figure is, however, unknown. These simple artifacts were the foundations for what we have come to associate most with ancient Egypt, statues, painted tomb walls, and even the pyramids. In fact, in all periods of ancient Egypt, pottery is consistently one of the most informative objects. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next ancient Egyptian object story. For further reading, please see the description box below.